Hello everybody, this is the best chef who invented coffee. Today I'm going to talk about that and also will show you how to make Turkish and Arabic coffee. The story said that there is this Arab goat herder either in Ethiopia or Yemen who invented coffee in the 14th century. This goat herder noticed that when the goats eat from this specific beans or plant, they start gaining a lot of energy and acting crazy. One day, this goat herder was so tired and he decided to chew some of those beans so he might get some energy like the goats. This is very Arab mentality. And this Arab mentality came from the lifestyle of the desert. They should be pioneer and invent food to survive. However, from that herder, everybody else knew about the plant and they start cooking it to make it taste better. Then they start grinding it and dissolve it in water. Drying beans and plants uh, grind them and cook them is the typical Arab way to make medicine that's very deep in the history of the Arab. And during the 14th century, the coffee became very popular drink in Yemen. The word coffee came from the Arabic word qaha and it means when someone loses his appetite for food and that's what coffee do. So from the Arabic name qahwa, the Turk took it to Istanbul and they name it kahva then the Italians, cafe, then coffee. I don't want to talk too much. Let's make some coffee. I will show you how to make the Turkish coffee first using this um, old school or the classic brass uh, alcohol burner, the authentic original. Because the final taste of coffee is very important. Every group of people will claim that they know the best and their coffee is better. So I'm going to show you the basics and then you take it from there. This is uh, three ounces. Um, pot, I'm gonna add the sugar to caramelize it first on a regular water. So just drop the sugar and let it go to the bottom, don't mix it, put it on the flame. And because the, the flame is just directed to the center, that will help to boil the water fast and caramelize the sugar fast too. That's what happened in a few seconds. Once this happened, it's now time for the coffee. So, for three ounces of water, one tablespoon of sugar, and one tablespoon of coffee. This is a very good Turkish coffee. And I'll put the coffee down slowly and mix it. In this stage and before the water boil or the coffee boil, it's very good to keep mixing the coffee so we get rid of the bitterness from the coffee. Alright, the coffee now developed this thing, the foamy thing. The Arab call it the face of the coffee. If you don't have this in the cup, then you don't know how to make coffee. When the coffee developed the face, I stopped mixing. And just keep an eye on it because it will cook very quickly and it will uh, raise very fast. As you see, very quickly the coffee cooked and if I didn't keep an eye on it, it will spill and you ruin the coffee actually. Now we get this beautiful uh, cups and we pour the coffee slowly, half here and half here. And here you go, we made two beautiful cups of Turkish coffee with a beautiful face. So as I told you, people take this very seriously. And usually people have their own mixes. Some people add some cardamom or cloves or a secret mix to make it more tasty. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, I love it. The color, the black color is what's common in um, Syria and Egypt and Turkey and even Greece and Italy. The Arabian coffee from the Arabian Peninsula, from Yemen, from Arabia, from the Gulf, it's totally different. It's lighter. They don't roast it that much. Also in every culture they name the coffee after the level of sugar. So when you order you just give them the level of sugar and they know their coffee. Just an example in Turkey. Uh, sada is no sugar, uh, one tablespoon is ota or orta, two tablespoons is sekerli. I just love how the Egyptian people name it. Uh, they have sada, uh, riha, mazbut, and sukkar ziyada. Amazing, I love Egypt. But when you go to Turkey, try the Turkish coffee with the Turkish delight. You will go crazy on this. Also, after you finish drinking your coffee, try to find someone to read your cup. So... With this, you flip it. 
So I did that the wrong way. You should put the plate on top and then you flip it that way. But this will work. I'll show you. Nice. And from that, people will start reading your cup and they will show you so many things that you will never notice. And the translation. See there, I have a horse. Can you see it? See the head down there? Horse is good. It means money. There are some people who take the cup reading very seriously and they make big decisions in life based on that. I don't believe in that. It's just a beautiful culture. And that's it. Alright. Let's make some Arabic coffee now. In the Arabian Peninsula, from Yemen to the desert to the center of Arabia, they don't roast the coffee that much. It's not dark, it's blonde, this color. And when you keep the beans to this level, you get the real flavor of the coffee, not the flavor of the carbon and the dark black coffee. I think the coffee this way tastes way better, but it have less aroma. That's why the Arab, the Bedouin, they put a lot of cardamom in the coffee. So, especially the Arab, they are very picky and coffee means a lot to the Arab because it's, it shows the hospitality and the generosity. I will use the same equipment and the same method to make the Arabic coffee. They don't do it this way, but this will work and we will get a good result. So, with the Arabic coffee, there is no sugar at all. You just put the coffee in the water directly and mix it. So we just put it on the flame and let it cook and in this case the face does not matter, no one care about it. Cardamom is a game changer, it's a big player in the Arabic coffee. You need a good kind of cardamom and freshly grinded cardamom too. I just grinded fresh 4 pieces of cardamom and cardamom is a very peaceful uh, spice, it will never ruin anything. The more the better. The moment the coffee and start boiling it's done it's ready in this level we put the cardamom and cardamom give you the best flavor when you don't cook it you just put it here and don't cook it we should let it sit for a few seconds so the coffee ground go to the bottom otherwise we should strain it before we serve it this is the basic way to make the coffee but some people add cloves or ginger ale and the fanciest is the saffron. When you see saffron in coffee, it's good. Okay, now we should pour the coffee and serve it. Gold. Wow. So when an Arab um, serve coffee, he give you a little bit in the cup. So he can serve you again and again and again to show the generosity and hospitality. And the most important thing with coffee for the Arab is dates. Oh my god. So you control the sweetness in your coffee by controlling the amount of dates you have with the coffee. And most of the things that people don't know about dates, the dates they have in Arabia is very delicious. Very, very delicious. This one here is called halas. It's a first grade halas. It's very sticky and sugary and it's very expensive too. Let's give it a try. Smells really good. Oh my god, this is so good. And have one date. Mm. Wow. And here is my advice to people who know an Arab from Arabia or go to visit. Don't miss this. This is really good. And get the chance to know a Bedouin or a Saudi, an original Bedouin from the desert. Go out with him to the desert. Try the coffee there. And they will keep giving you coffee and coffee until you shake the cup. Then they will stop. If you don't shake the cup, you will get more coffee. Well, thank you everybody for following me and watching this. My name is Khalid Habash and my nickname is The Bash Chef. I make food. Today I told you the story of the coffee and we made Turkish coffee and original Arabian coffee. 
my account in snapchat is bashchef also with the same name you can find me in facebook and you can find my youtube channel